Okay. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. Through support and resources offered, we aspire to help individuals become shining light parents, meaning a shift from a state of emotional heaviness to one of hopefulness and greater peace of mind. Helping Parents Heal goes a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and afterlife evidence in a non-dogmatic way. Helping Parents Heal affiliate groups welcome everyone regardless of religious or non-religious background and encourage open dialogue. Attendance at all meetings is voluntary. All discussions that take place at affiliate-led meetings are confidential. We hope that participants will learn from and share with each other. Zoom meetings run by leadership are not confidential. These meetings typically feature guest presenters and are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members <clears throat> worldwide can watch and benefit. Neither type of Helping Parents Heal meeting is designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers, allowing parents to learn about many possible ways to heal. This includes presenters covering progressive topics such as afterlife evidence and connecting with our children who have passed. The views expressed by our guest speakers may or may not reflect the opinions of helping parents heal leaders and members. So we ask that you take from their presentations, whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome everyone. Welcome Mark. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. We're Thank so you. excited about this evening. Thank we you. are thrilled to have Mark this evening and I'll read a short bio so that you all will uh, know a little bit more about him. Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, AKA psychic explorer, explorer is the author of the spiritual bestsellers, Evidence of Eternity, Never Letting Go, and The Afterlife Frequency, which was just published recently. Mark Anthony's credentials and experience are unparalleled in the paranormal world. He is an Oxford-educated trial attorney licensed to practice law in Florida, Washington, D.C., and before the United States Supreme Court. In England, he studied mediumship at the prestigious Arthur Finley College for the Advancement of Psychic Science. Dr. Gary Schwartz, professor of psychology, medicine, neurology, psychiatry, and surgery at the University of Arizona and director of the Laboratory for Advances in Consciousness and Health, and by the way, also a keynote presenter at our conference, has ranked Mark as one of the top mediums in the United States. Mark Anthony is also an international best-selling author. His books, Never Letting Go, Evidence of Eternity, and The Afterlife Frequency have helped parents worldwide who have suffered from the loss of a child. For more information about Mark Anthony, his books, tour schedule, and personal readings, kindly visit his website, www.evidenceofeternity.com or www.afterlife frequency.com. I'll put those in the chat box. Also, please watch his podcast, The Psychic and the Doc with Dr. Pat. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mark Anthony, Psychic Explorer. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, Irene, everybody um, with uh, with Helping Parents Heal. It is such an honor to, to be here to, to work with all of you Shining Light Parents. Now, I know that everybody is chomping at the bit uh, to get into the spirit communication, and but I want to go through a brief orientation first so that, um, you know, I want everybody to get as much out of this as possible. Everything I do is about tuning into frequency. That's why I, my last book is entitled The Afterlife Frequency. And when I open up to frequency, spirits are going to come forward. Here's the thing. We got a lot of people here, so we got a lot of spirits that want to talk to all of you. And one of the key concepts that I have introduced in my books, Evidence of Eternity, and in greater and to a greater extent in the afterlife frequency, is the collective consciousness and collective consciousness communication. Think of our soul as a drop of water, and so that when we physically die, that drop of water 
plunges into the eternal sea of souls. And so souls are pure energy and they're connected to other souls, connected to other souls, so on and so forth. We maintain our individuality, and but those souls can, can adjust their frequency so that I can perceive them. So we got a lot of drops of water coming through. We don't have a glass of water. I think we're going to have like an Olympic-sized swimming pool coming through tonight. But here's the beauty of collective consciousness communication. <clears throat> when a spirit comes to me, first I'll get it. Hold on one second. First I get a gender. Then I get an idea of their connection to you. I know everybody here has children on the other side, but sometimes other um, people connected to you may come through. And if that's the case, please, please uh, take that as well. So let's say that um, I start describing a spirit and it makes sense to more than one of you. Please raise your hand. Here's why. Spirits with a commonality will come in together in tandem. Sometimes that the commonality are the people here. And it's going to be more than just we're parents. It may be something, maybe a, a particular thing that you're dealing with. Let me give an example. I was doing a session in Florida, and it was in front of about 100 or so people. And suddenly I keep hearing Paisley, Paisley. So I say, Paisley, does the word or the term Paisley make sense? Three people raised their hands. The first woman stood up and said, I was at the mall today and I was walking by Macy's and all of a sudden I felt I needed to buy a Paisley skirt. So I went in and bought one. Then a gentleman stood up and said, my father passed recently and I was going through his things yesterday and I wanted his Paisley tie. I don't know why. And the third person said, well, my grandmother's name was Paisley. And then all the spirits connected to the Paisleys came forward. What was the commonality? Paisley. But then there were more because the spirit started talking about medical conditions, um, specifically things with the thyroid and the pancreas that apply to each one of those. So that's why if I start describing something that makes sense to more than one person, please um, raise your hand. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, she's really good with this. She'll she'll get you up there. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, good. All right. I love I always love working with helping parents heal because you guys get it. All right. So then once the spirit comes through, first I get the gender, then I get an idea of the relationship to you. Then I start describing um, the characteristics. So let's say. I zero in on one person and um, I start presenting evidence. I'm going to see things, hear things, feel things, and know things. The questions I'm going to be asking you a lot are going to be, do you recognize this or does that make sense? If something does not immediately make sense to you, please avoid what I have termed the dreaded no, no, no syndrome. A lot of times people get into no, 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 no and they start shooting everything down. What that does is it creates a negative barrier. It's like you're slamming the door in the spirit's face. Let's keep that door open. It's better to say, I'm not sure, let me think about it, or I don't know just yet. Also, it's after the reading when things are gonna make sense. Think of the reading like a flower, blooms, blossoms, unfolds. It can take hours, days, weeks, even longer for the full meaning of a reading to make sense. I was doing a session for these two sisters there here in Florida a couple years ago, and their mother spirit came through and began to talk to me about their other sister. Now, other sister's alive and well, but she wasn't present during the reading. And she kept giving me the name Michael, 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 and 10, 11, October 11. And they were like, come on, Mark, everybody knows somebody named Michael. And it's like, well, yeah, don't we all? I mean, I've got like three different cousins named Michael. And, but they couldn't think of anyone close to them or of significance named Michael, and they couldn't think of anything in October. So 10, 11, October 11th didn't ring a bell. So, so don't strain and struggle trying to figure it out. Just jot it down. Let's move on because straining and struggling is more than no, no, no energy. Six weeks later, they contact me. Mark, we figured it out. 10 days after the reading with you, it was October 11th, 10, 11. 
And on that day, Hurricane Michael hit our sister's hometown in Florida. She went into labor three weeks early, had her baby girl during Hurricane Michael on 10-11. Well, now it's making sense. You see, spirits can see future events. So just because it doesn't make sense to you right away doesn't mean that it won't at some point. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Also, um, your interpretation is more important than mine. I was doing a reading last weekend on an online event, and this woman's grandfather came through, and I keep hearing French, and I said, chapeau. Well, I know that means hat. And she started laughing, and I go, what? She goes, he was born in Quebec, which is French-speaking part of Canada, in a little town named Chapeau. <laughs> All right, so I'm thinking Chapeau means a hat. I didn't know there was a Chapeau um, Quebec. So if I have one interpretation of something, but you have a different one, we always go with yours over mine. Also, don't overthink it or overanalyze it the second it comes in. I get a lot of intelligent clients that way overthink things. Hey, look, I'm, in, in our jobs, overthinking is a virtue, but in spirit communication, and I teach this in my, my uh, book, The Afterlife Frequency, feel first. Go with what you feel, no matter how weird it is. So I'm doing a reading for an electrical engineer. Now, we do want them to overthink their jobs because if they don't like our computers don't work and, you know, everything, everything doesn't work. So his mother comes through and wants me to give a message to his sisters. So I'm getting like Martha or Marcia. No, my sisters are not named Martha or Marcia. Their names are Margaret, Marie, Marilyn, and Marianne. And I'm like, seriously, dude? And, he, and then he started laughing and he said, man, I'm really being the electrical engineer here. I'm totally overthinking it. All right. Does that make sense with everyone? All right. Spirits can um, identify themselves in many ways. They may bring up things that they didn't like because we can be defined and described by what we don't like just as easily as by what we do like. They're going to talk about you or somebody close to you in this world. They'll bring up medical, personal, financial, all sorts of things about you or about somebody close to you in, in this world. And when it comes to medical, I tend to get a lot of medical about the people I'm doing the reading for. It is not a substitute for doctor's advice. But they may be letting you know, hey, I know you have this condition, and I'm around you and aware of what's happening in your life. Or they could be giving you the heads up on something you need to have checked. Make sense? All right. Um, with names, I may get something close to the name. Mitchell, Michael, Cindy, Sandy, Danny, Donnie. Uh, just last week, I was doing a reading for a woman, and her brother came through, and I keep hearing, and all of a sudden I see the Lion King, and I see Simba's girlfriend, Nala, and I'm like, Nala? She goes, oh my God, my brother's name was Nola, and my sister was going to have a baby, and if it was a girl, we're going to name her Nola. All right, that'll work, okay? If I'm getting Nala, and the spirit's Nolan, and they're going to name the baby Nola, see what I'm saying? All right, guys, you got to give me a nod. I'm a, I'm a medium, not a mind reader. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, numbers are always challenging. They can be an age, date, time frame, address, or grouping, like the sisters with 1011. Of course, they didn't know the baby was going to be born on 1011 until she was. And I will pick up on how people die. I feel it. And I know that this can be extremely upsetting. Uh, obviously, you're shining light parents. Different causes of death may have a similar physical sensation to me. So if I talk about an impact to my head, that could be head trauma, stroke, aneurysm, but it could mean a quick passing because I get a jolt. Burning sensations tends to be cancer, although they could have been burned in some way, or it could be neurological, like a burning ner nerve pain. Um, please understand that when I'm giving evidence, particularly about how somebody died, I know sometimes I come across as clinical. I'll say, I'm getting a spirit and I'm tasting blood and I'm seeing this. And I am not unsympathetic and I don't mean it in, an, in, in, a, in a cold or clinical manner. When a spirit is connecting with me, they're transmitting the information so quickly, I want to give you a full report on it. So if I sound somewhat clinical, um, please, I, I do realize that I am talking to, to their, their parents 
Um, but I, I, I certainly am sympathetic to what you're going through. My last, last point is when I'm working with the spirit and, and, and communicating with you, please try not to interrupt me or talk over me. Reason being is it can cause me to lose the connection with the spirit. And if I ask you a question, please just answer the question. Do not give me the New Testament as an answer. Um, I was doing a reading for this really sweet lady. She must have been in her 80s. I could tell because it was a phone reading and everything was like, oh, gracious me. I mean, she was just this really sweet lady. And her uncle came through and I keep getting pilot, pilot. And she goes, oh, yes, he was a pilot. Now that's all I needed. But here's what she said. Oh, you know, Mark, he was a pilot for President Dwight D. Eisenhower. All right. Now, how do I not hear that? So, you know, because maybe the next part of the message would have been about that, or maybe they used to live on Eisenhower Street. Do you see what I'm saying? So if I ask a question, please just answer the question. Do not give me your life history and the spirit's life history. Does that make sense with everyone? <clears throat> All right. I'm going to start with a prayer to raise frequency, and then we begin. Um, oh, God, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O divine God, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we're pardoned, and it is in dying that we're born to eternal life. Amen. All right, I'm picking up on a lot of spirits, but there is a female energy coming through. Um, she, I, I get a thinner build on her and um, getting dark hair. She looks like, I'm trying to get a, a visual, trying to get a fix on her age. She could have been in her teens, could have been in her early 20s. Um, and she keeps showing me her, her arm and I'm, I'm feeling, um, pinpricks in my arm. Now this could mean maybe she was on a lot of uh, medications like IVs, but based on the dizzy disorientation, this could indicate drug usage. Um, and what I'm getting with her is prior to passing a diffuse mindset which is indicating she was having difficulty with her mental focus and clarity. And I'm also getting fluctuations with her heart rate and her blood pressure because I keep hearing like that. So there was ringing in her ears. This could indicate maybe she had a history of tinnitus. Maybe she had some um, blood pressure issues. But what she's explaining to me is I'm tasting a metallic taste. Okay, now a metallic taste in in my mouth indicates drug usage, but a metallic taste could also mean seizures or convulsions. Reason being is when I was four years old, I went into these horrible convulsions. And when I came out of it, I had a metallic taste. Sometimes the metallic is a gunshot. I'm not getting that here. Does this make sense with anybody? Okay, that, so is that Jane? Yeah, um, I saw what Jane said about um, a lot of blood tests. Let, let's mm -hmm. bring uh, Jane up on deck. Jane, sure. Okay, let me ask her to unmute. Hi, Jane. Can you Hi. please unmute? Hi, Hi there. Hi, Mark. Okay, so Jane, could you just say one yes. thing? Uh, oh, I see. Hi. Nicole. All right, I'm we're here. we're. I'm trying to find her on the screen. Oh, I'm there right she here. is. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jane. Hi. I, I know, but I'm seeing like hundreds of people. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Okay, so um, thinner could be late teens, early 20s. Did she have darker hair? Yes. Uh, okay. Did she? All right. And you said there were blood draws? Yes. Uh, Tons okay. of constant blood draws, blood draws. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I keep getting the you know if she had tinnitus or issues with blood pressure, do you know? Um, yes, towards the end, she did. Wh which one? Tinnitus, uh, ringing uh, the, the blood pressure. Blood? Okay, yeah. hold on. 
Are you on some type of medication right now? Because she's talking about you. When I hear the term apothecary, and you don't have to divulge lots of stuff. Yeah. It's interesting. When I get the archaic term apothecary, that means uh, the person that I'm doing the reading for is on some type of prescription. And she's talking about, are there four different prescriptions that you're taking or None. four different medications? No, not I'm not in it on anything. All right. She's talking about four prescriptions. Do you know if she was on four different prescriptions? What she was, yes. Oh, she was. A okay. Lot. Yes. Okay. Tons. Okay. All right. Hold on. October, 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 October. Now, when a piece of information comes in, Jane, it doesn't always mean it's about the spirit. It could be about you or somebody else close to either you or to her. And uh, October could indicate a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to you or her or someone close to either of you. Does that make any sense? Uh, it, it does. Um, her dad had a stroke in October. Okay. And is he still here? Yeah, he's doing okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, did he have, was the right side of his uh, face or right side affected? Um, was he still able to talk? Yes, he was. Okay, he was. so then he had, okay, so that means he had a right brain stroke, which did not affect um, his speech center, which is in the left side of the brain. Well, actually, he had an ischemic event, which that's how he knew, and temporarily, he couldn't really speak, and then okay, he recovered it, yeah. He recovered, okay, so she, mm -hmm. see, she's around, she's aware of that happening, yeah. and is he taking uh, magnesium, do you know? Or is no. magnesium an issue? Uh, I don't. Okay, hold on. Be careful. Um, magnesium's the issue. That doesn't mean start, you know, pumping magnesium right. into them. Uh, that's something you may need to check with with your doctor. Mm -hmm. But I getting the sense that magnesium is going to be beneficial toward his recovery because it's going to help with um, his neurological system. Okay. okay. Um, now the other thing she's talking about, she's switching back to her and she's talking about um, toward, toward her transition. And once again, mm -hmm. um, you know, please accept my condolences. I'm getting this. I, I just can't breathe. It, it yeah. feels like yes. um, when someone goes into anaphylaxis, it doesn't necessarily mean she went into anaphylaxis, but it's, it's how, I feel it. I'm feeling like my throat swelling and I'm getting this difficulty breathing and then mm -hmm. the heartbeat, but bump, but bump, 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 bump. And then there was an erratic heartbeat. And then she said it was like a falling sensation, not that she fell, but it's, mm -hmm. she said what she, she felt um, was like a falling sensation. And she wants you to know that her passing was very quick. Yeah. When, when she let go and she springboarded right into the light springboard. And it's cool the way she's showing, I'm sorry, I don't, there's nothing cool about dying, but it's the yeah. way she's showing me. I feel like, you know, a diving board, she's jumping mm -hmm. on the diving board. It's going, <laughs> and she's like going, all right, was she a swimmer or is there something about swimming? Yes. Okay. Yes. What, what What's the significance of swimming? Um, She wasn't the most sportive person but she was an incredible she was a really good swimmer and loved yeah. it isn't it interesting that she is using a diving board uh to explain how yeah. she's jumping on that and i'm getting that and literally she keeps going brrr, like she propelled right into the light is uh -huh. there a denny could be a danny a denny or a danny connected to you or to her in any way because she said this is one of the people who met her. Oh. Denny could be like a Dennis, or there could be a Dan or a Daniel. It could be a Donnie, but I'm hearing like Denny, Denny, like that. Huh. I'm I'm not sure she um but don't she was worry. Young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand that, but this could be like one of your grandparents or great grandparents. It could even be somebody that she may have never. Um, yeah. met in this world but she wants you to know that and she said the special ring the special ring um is there i mean look i know all girls have rings I mean, lots of guys have rings but she's showing me a ring and on the ring it has the stone 
which is the birthstone for the month of August, which is some people call it peridot, others call it peridot. Is there mm -hmm. something about a particular ring or the month of August, a birth, death, anniversary or event, which would make sense to you, to her, or someone close to you in any way? Um, oh, somebody just said, my son is Denny. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, 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 Ho hold on. Um, we may be arcing over yeah. to, to somebody else. So Jane, yeah. hold that thought. Whoever's um, son is Denny. And remember, it doesn't matter if Denny knew her in this world, okay, we got to realize that spirits are immortal living beings, and what they knew um, is, is much greater than anything they knew here. So because I was specifically getting the name Denny, um, Elizabeth, who, who has a son whose name was Denny? It's Danny. So um, the person with well, the son, um, okay, It's Dory, going. right, Elizabeth? You want me to? Exactly. Yeah. All right, Jane. Thank so I'll you. leave that with you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And who knows? We may be coming back to you. Uh, God bless. You. All right. Is there a Thank Lucy? You. Real quick. Is there a Lucy? Okay. All right. Let's go with, um, is that Danny? My son is Danny. Okay. All right. Who's that? Is that Carol? Dory, I believe. So Dory. Yeah, you... I'm looking. Mm -hmm. I know Dory, it's always tough when we got, I know, because I'm trying to read. I've asked her to unmute. Hi, Dory. Dory, there. Let's see. There you are. Hey, Dory. Hello. Um, yeah, don't worry if if um if he knew her daughter, because what could be happening is I could just be arcing over to your son. But let me see if we got him first. Wow. Okay. Was was um was he yeah, he feels like he could have been late teens or early twenties. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Did he have a real good jawline? He showed me his jawline. Mm -hmm. Okay. And oh, everyone do me a favor. Please say yes or no as opposed to uh-huh or uh-uh. I need to be able to, I got a lot going on with the spirits. I need to be able to understand you guys clearly. All right. So I'm getting a good looking young man coming through with a great jawline. He goes, hi, mom. Okay. And he keeps going, arr, arr. <laughs> All right. What is with the whole pirate thing? And when I get pirates, now, these are my, oh, does that make sense to you in some way? Pirates, but strange noises and strange faces. Strange noises and strange faces. All right, when I see pirates, this is going to sound weird, but this is what I, um, pirates can mean a connection with the state of Pennsylvania because of the Pittsburgh Pirates. It could mean a connection with Florida because of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for other reasons, sometimes pirates mean some type of reference to Puerto Rico. That doesn't mean that he had to go to any of those places, but you or someone close to you may have a, um, some type of connection with Pennsylvania and or Florida and or Puerto Rico. And if not, we'll go with the strange faces and all that. All right, hold on. Someone said, Florida. all right, Florida. All right. And then we're going to arc over to Valerie next. Okay. So he had the, um, he or you had the co contact with Florida. Florida. Um, now he's talking about his passing and I do feel um, an impact sensation. Now, when I talk about an impact sensation, um, that can indicate an abrupt passing, but sometimes that could mean like head trauma, stroke, aneurysm, because I get a jolt, but he had an, yeah. uh, an abrupt passing. Um, I am also tasting blood. That doesn't always mean a bleed out. All right, that's making sense. Um, he doesn't really want to dwell a whole lot on his physical passing. He said, mom, you've been through it enough. He said, it's like, you can't stop. And he's not criticizing you. He's explaining, he understands that you're, you're suffering, um, like, like all parents with, with the trauma from his passing. Um, and he keeps saying mistake, accident, mistake, accident, mistake, accident. He keeps going mistake, accident, mistake, accident. Um, let me see if I can get a clarification on that. He said that, and I keep getting like, did it was, uh, did he like driving fast or something? <laughs> yes. That, that looks, that looks like a yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, uh, was this some type of automotive accident? Yeah. Because I'm getting the, Wee! and then he said, well, I'm not going to say what, well, he said, 
the <laughs> last thing he said was, oh, can I just say it? Is that okay with everyone? He said, oh, shit, was the last thing that he said um, because he said it was a mistake accident and that was it. I mean, th his passing was very, very quick. Now, do you see in the, the past two, your, your daughter, excuse me, your son and Jane's daughter, both died very abruptly. That's part of the commonality of the, the first wave of, of collective spirits coming through. And he is handing to you a beautiful stone, which is an opal. Now, isn't that interesting? Because October came up in the last reading, and opal is the birthstone for October. Is there something perhaps about an opal? Oh, oh, what is that? You got an opal on? His birthday was October 12th. Okay, there we go. Um, that is a verifiable fact following the message. When a spirit gives me a message of an explanatory advisory nature, and he's explaining that his passing was an accident, it was very quick, that's the advice and explanation, and then when the spirit immediately follows that up with an objectively verifiable fact, October, his birthday was in October, the verifiable fact of October is how the spirit is letting you and I know that we've properly received and interpreted the message. And so that for everybody during during the session tonight, if I say verifiable fact on the message, we know we got it. Um, cinnamon. I'm tasting cinnamon sticks. Are you doing something with cinnamon, cinnamon flavor, cinnamon aroma? And I know this time of year because of Christmas and all those cinnamon brooms and all that stuff, but I am just permeated right now with cinnamon. Candles? Are they cinnamon candles? Um, all right, hold on, hold no. on, hold on. When you think of cinnamon, what immediately comes to mind for you, don't worry about how it applies to him. What comes to mind for me? Yeah, yeah. For me is apples or hair color or like apples, cinnamon apples or hair cinnamon. color. Right, but what does that have any significance for you? He was kind of, he was, Blonde, right, hold on. Brown. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. Hold on. Somebody just said something about cinnamon. Oh, somebody said they lit a cinnamon candle before they got. All right. So we're having a lot of cinnamon hits. They're just not with you. Okay. So uh, don't worry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, he did like this. Um, there was a cinnamon drink uh, that he had in the freezer and but, he wasn't, but he did occasionally have a sip that there was a what I, uh, it's a your, your, your cinnamon, connection's not very good you're breaking up an alcohol cinnamon alcohol that he, um All right. All i don't right. know what it was <laughs> that that's fine you can check that later on so that's another verifiable fact following the message okay um are you doing some type of I don't want to say, memorial. well, maybe a memorial or some type of service, like right after or right around or right after Christmas for him. Oh, you got to speak up, please. Yes. Okay. He's going to be there with you. He wants you to know that. He said, and he goes, and you're going to catch a glimpse. You're going to catch a glimpse. Um, you've been seeing like little orbs or something, haven't you? Yes. Okay, good job, mom. As he said, good job, mom. What's happening, um, uh, Dory, is that you've been attentive and aware and you're picking up on his energy. And that's what orbs are. Orbs are spirits. And you're picking up on his electromagnetic energy. And he wants you to know that. And he also wants you to know that he's going to be with you at the memorial that you're doing. He said, just keep it cool, mom. Just keep it cool. He's a nice young man. So I'll leave that to you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Elizabeth, do we have someone that, that they were talking about pirates? Pirates, I mean. Um, yes. yes, you had said Valerie, I believe, Mark. And she <laughs> said she just lit cinnamon candles in her kitchen window also. 
Okay, let's go. To... Yeah, let's go over to Valerie. Okay, hold on. I've asked her to unmute. Hi, Valerie. Hi, guys. Unmuted. I didn't light the candles. They're cinnamon sticks to fight off the ants. When okay. They come... right, hold dog... on. Val Valerie, Valerie, you're doing the President Dwight D. Eisenhower thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how easy that is? Because yes. maybe um, your spirit would have talked about why you're doing that. And if you can, oh, please be stationary. Don't be moving around. It's very distracting for me. Okay. So I need you to find a central location. And that goes for everybody. No moving around. Okay. Um, and I'm not, I'm not yelling at you. I'm, I'm trying to guide you here. Okay. Interesting. It's kind of, I keep going male, female, male, female, male, female. And I'm not sure what's going on here. So I may have more than one spirit coming through. You don't have more than one child in spirit, do you? I have only one child in spirit. Is that a female? No, it's a male. Interesting. I'm going to ask the female spirit to step aside. Let's go with the, um, the male spirit. Um, okay. All of a sudden, in, um, once again, please accept my condolences. I feel like <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I feel like I'm going into respiratory failure. The room's spinning around. I feel hot, sweaty. And he was trying to breathe, but just couldn't get the oxygen into his lungs. And he said that he was trying to survive, oh my trying to survive. And, and obviously this is, is making a lot of sense um, for you. Um, he says, this, there's so many, didn't mean it, didn't mean it, didn't mean it. He keeps saying he didn't mean it. Um, and he said that I'm also getting a, a bitter metallic taste in my mouth. And I was I had that sensation earlier. The bitter metallic taste that can mean um it could be neurological, like convulsion, seizures, that it could also be a medication, legal or otherwise, but I keep getting a metallic taste in my mouth. And I'm seeing like little spots. Um, I don't know if you've ever fainted, but a lot of times before people faint, they start seeing spots. And that's what he's talking about. Um, and were, were there paramedics or somebody trying to resuscitate him? Do you know? No. It's, it's interesting because I feel that he wasn't breathing, but his heart was beating for a limited period of time after he passed. Um, does that make any sense to you? I was hoping that was not the case, but I don't know. Medically, it doesn't make sense. I hope it was fast, whatever happened to him. Well, his, his conscious awareness went very quickly. I'm just talking about physiologically, I'm feeling a heartbeat, um, but this is what he's telling me. And he keeps showing me the numbers Three and four, three and four, three and four. Now, does that make sense to you? Number in, in, four. I'm sorry, go ahead. Four. Number four makes sense. In what way? And number three makes sense too, actually. All right, no, that's fine. Yeah, three, uh, that could be the third of any month, the fourth of any month. It could be so, three, could be four, could be 34 or 43. Go ahead. I can tell you what it is. So March is his birthday. This is the third month. And okay. he passed on the fourth of another month. But of another month. Oh, yeah. that'll work that'll work okay yeah. um he keeps repeating didn't mean it didn't mean it didn't mean it and he wants you to understand this he said that um you talked to him you talked to him a lot and you know certainly it's not unusual for i mean you know i talk to my people all the time and but you talked to him it seems like a lot in the middle of the night does this make sense? Like around, it's right around like 3.30, 3, it's between three and four in the morning. It Inici seems, yeah, I'm sorry? Initially after his passing that I could not sleep for a long time. So it- Right, that and right. yeah, and you were making contact with him a lot. Hey, did you ever make these sandwiches for him which had like a pimento cheese? Um, <laughs> he's talking about these sandwiches and they taste good. But it's got like this, like either pimento or cheese, it's something. Uh, it's, it, does that make any sense? 
It does. I made lots of stuff. I mean, he liked homemade lunches for school when he was younger. So some of it was sandwiches with cheese. Cheese. And did you put pimentos in it or, not, uh, or red is, pepper, roasted red peppers? Um, I did not. I did not. But I do roast peppers, but not in the sandwich way, though. Okay, so you roast peppers. We got that. He liked the cheese sandwiches. All right, yeah. let me see what else he wants you to know. <laughs> oh, he's like taking a glass of milk and pushing it away. Now, that could mean maybe he did not like milk, or maybe you or he or someone close to either of you could possibly be lactose intolerant. Does that make any sense? Father is. His father's lactose intolerant? He okay, is. so that means he wants to talk about his dad. All right. <laughs> um you guys just get uh, do something with your car, either get a new car, get some work done on the car? My daughter, who we just picked up from college, she graduated, just had the brakes done two days ago on her car. Yeah, okay. Um, she was putting that off getting the brakes done, wasn't she? The brakes were in horrible shape, and we, my husband and I are shocked that she allowed the car to get to that point. Yeah, so he's acknowledging that and he's very <laughs> glad that you took care of that. And he says, stop worrying about her. She's going to be fine. She's going to be fine. Um, I keep getting an R. I don't know if it's like um, Rory or Ro. I'm getting like an R sound. Does that make any sense? Uh, a name that starts with R? We have um, relatives. Relatives was our names. Okay. Um, was there, yeah. I want to say like, it's almost like Robert, but it's not Robert. It could be like Robert. Robert. It's some, something like an R-O sound. I want to say like Rosario, but uh, it's something like that. Do you want me to tell you? Yes. So grandmother, my husband's mom is Rosalie. Oh, okay. And... and it, her husband, my husband's stepfather, is Ron. Okay, Ron. are they are they here on planet Earth? They're still alive. Okay. No, there's somebody over there with him with that R with an R O name. So I want you to think about that. Okay. Hey, are you getting ready to go on a trip? We just came back from major okay. trip. Okay, major. just got back from okay. Yeah, because what it is, um, I was raised Catholic and certain saints mean certain things. And I was seeing St. Christopher. That means you either got back from a trip or you're getting ready to go on a trip. So he wants you to, to know that he's aware of this. Okay. Now he wants to leave you with something. He's holding up a laurel wreath. L-A-U-R-E-L. -E that makes sense to you in what way? I love Greek mythology. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Anymore. No, that, you know, and that's exactly what I was thinking because laurel wreaths were extremely important in Greek mythology. Like the god Apollo, the god of prophecy, always wore laurel wreaths. And then the Romans used to wear laurel wreaths when they were heroes. And, um, you know, so they're, they're beautiful leaves. So there's something about he's leaving you with a laurel wreath. I think I know what this means. I think you're, I know what that means too. What do you think? You're his hero. <laughs> you're his hero. That's why he's handing you the laurel wreaths. Mm. I was taking more sarcastic approach to things because we were joking that he's not an Adonis, but he is a Bacchus, which is... <laughs> Uh, different God. He's not. He was very good looking in my eyes, but you know, we didn't feel like he was an Apollo figure, but more like a fun God. You know, like a drunkard, which he was not. But you know, that well, was our yeah, God. like uh, yeah, Bacchus. Uh, well, your interpretation is more important than mine, <laughs> but we'll go with yours. But he also wants you to know that you are his hero, okay? Oh. And he appreciates he he appreciates you. Always did always will. So I'll leave that with you. I thank you so much. Oh, uh, it's well, my yeah, pleasure. You. Okay, hold on. I got a new round of spirits coming in. I mean, there's lots coming. All right, hold on. Oh, goodness. Oh, this one's, I'm feeling a baby, um, baby boy. 
because I'm seeing an infant and I'm seeing blue, like a blue bl blanket. And I'm feeling, ow, my head feels like could be swelling, swelling, fluid, blood buildup. This is some type of um, fluid on the brain, um, fluid buildup. And this baby did come to term, um, but, but not for very long. Does this make sense to anyone? Okay, hold on, baby. Oh, that's what you put out. Okay. Oh, that's me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me work a little bit more. Um, yeah, this was a baby boy. Um, he passed right after birth. Is is what I'm getting. So um, let's see if anyone does that resonate with anyone. I was third. I was third. It's possible that he may have been the third child um, for this parent. All right, let's see what he wants. Hold on. Ooh, did somebody say, or maybe a triplet? What was the one before that? Somebody uh, said, uh, I had a baby boy, but he was stillborn. Okay, Let, let's bring, let's bring, um, sure. let's bring her up. So Carol Rafa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Carol, can you unmute, please? And Hi. Okay, can you put your video on, Carol? Oh, we can't sure. See. Hi. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Um, yeah, yeah. I got the baby boy, and you said he was still born. Do you know? And um, once again, please accept my condolences. Um, I'm such a. I love kids, and I'm such a softy when it comes to babies. So I got to keep it together for this. For this. Um, Did they give you a reason why he passed? Because I feel this fluid buildup in the brain. That's okay. That's okay. So uh, let me work with uh, with him. Um, he's explaining to me that you did everything right during your pregnancy. You were doing, I mean, you were following doctor's advice. You were taking the vitamins. You were doing everything. And he yeah. said, and, and even though your mind is telling you that you did everything right. Your heart still feels guilty. He said, so this is why he's coming through is to remove this pain of guilt. He said that what happened was there in his brain, in the brain blood barrier, there were vessels which weren't properly formed and his head filled with blood and it sent him into um into a state of of like paralysis that affected his cardiopulmonary system and he's explaining to me that this is a genetic defect it's a proclivity that skips a few generations and it comes down to you through your father's side of the family. So I don't know if you can track a couple generations back because, you know, when we get past like the 1950s, they didn't have very good records on things. They didn't have ultrasounds. And, and so, but he wants you to know that this was not your fault, that this was going to happen no matter what. And it was at a certain point and it was almost, it was just hours hours right before he was uh, born and he keeps talking about nine nine the number nine i don't know if that meant nine hours nine minutes um nine could also mean the month of september it could be the ninth of any month does nine or september have any significance to you in any way yes well march 9th is my birthday Woohoo! that's a biggie yeah. Okay, that, that's when we're the verifiable fact following the message. So see, he's letting you know that, that this was not your fault. 
And that's why he's come. He's he come, he's come through for a lot of reasons. And what people need to understand when we're communicating with babies, even in utero, they are immortal living beings. You see, spirits pre-exist the human body, come into the body and move on. So that's why communicating with a baby isn't goo goo gaga. He he has been around since the beginning of of time. And he was going to be in this incarnation, but due to this genetic proclivity, um, he was not to come into this lifetime. Now, your question, he said, then why did this happen to me? So let's see if uh, what he... He's can, explaining I ask you, can I ask you a question? Yeah, but I'm in it's, the middle of delivering you a message, <laughs> which I just now lost. Okay. All right, so go ahead, ask your question. And just for everyone else, please don't interrupt me when I'm, I'm sorry. with the spirit. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. I just wanted to know if there was a girl with him, his sister, because I also lost my daughter. Do you feel like if she's All around right. with him? Okay. Well, she, she wasn't a baby, though, was she? No. She was older. Okay. Um, did she die real abruptly, real suddenly? Okay, because um, I'm feeling this, uh, well, I'll tell you, I'm feeling the sense of, of an abrupt passing. Yes. Um, hold on. Did she sing a lot? He talks oh, about, yeah. yeah. So yeah, she's there and she's singing. She's singing. She was also very articulate. And she just said, Sue sells seashells down by the seashore. Please don't ask me to do that one again. Okay. So there could be an S name or a Sue or something about seashells that might make sense to you. I mean, a lot of people like them, but this also indicates to me that she was very, very articulate. Does that make yeah. any sense to you? Yes. Okay. In what way? Well, her name was Carissa. She had two S's in her name and she loved the beach. Perfect. Okay. Who plays the flute? She did when she was in school, but she made me pay for classes. Uh, 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 Dwight D. Eisenhower. <laughs> <laughs> a simple yes will do. Yeah, All she right. did. And that's also a verifiable fact following the message because they don't fling out random instruments hoping to get a hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I don't mean to, you know, jump on you, but it, you know how easy it is. You want to tell me everything. Let's get her to tell us um, all of this. Um, was there a significant injury to her head and neck? Yes. Yeah, because um, that's what I'm feeling. Um, mm -hmm. And she said it was so quick. Yeah. It was so quick. Yes. And so... Um, did she go first before the baby or the no. baby? Go okay. Um, because they are together and is there a Tammy? Tommy. There's a Tommy. 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 Who's Tommy? Yeah. Uh, my daughter's best friend. Okay. You know if he writes poetry or writes a lot? No, I don't know. I could find yeah. that. Huh? Yeah, it seems like he writes or has written things about her. Um, and That's maybe, possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. She's now handing you a box of kitchen matches. You know those old-fashioned matches? Yeah. The wood matches? I, I know they still make them because I see them sometimes. When I go to like to the dollar store, they always sell them yes. there. But but um, is what is it about the kitchen matches that makes? Oh, you don't want to know. Okay, as long as it makes sense to you. Yes, it makes sense. Well, I smoke. I used to smoke, and sometimes I will use one of those matches to light my cigarette. Okay. All right. Let's see now. Do you plant a lot of trees or flowers? Flowers. Yeah, um, she's talking about you getting your hands in the dirt, touching the flowers. And it's funny because she's talking about nitrogen. And I know that uh, our atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. The Earth has an oxygen nitrogen atmosphere. Oh, and uh, plants get real green when you feed them fertilizers rich in nitrogen. 
So maybe if you're having an issue with some of your flowers, she's giving you some gardening <laughs> advice from house. heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and the last thing she's leaving you with is dandelions. I'm getting all these dandelions. Now, dandelions, they're wildflowers and they're pretty oh, little nice. yellow flowers. But a lot of people eat dandelions too. Right. It's a, a very bitter um, green. See, I like all the greens and I'll eat dandelions and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people don't like this. Is there anything about dandelions that would make sense to you in any way? The only thing I could think of is I get them in my backyard and we'd pick them once in a while. But sunflowers are like our thing, mine and her thing with sunflowers. With sunflowers. Okay. Yeah, so that reminds me of the sunflower. All right, then we'll we'll take that connection. Yeah. Um, but she's also talking about dandelions. Here's what I'm going to recommend. When we're done with this, just do an internet search for the health benefits of dandelions, um, because that may be something that you should incorporate into your diet. Okay. Um, that's the sense that I'm getting. All right. And thank uh, you so so much. You are so well. Hey, do you like artichokes? Because she's just oh, put a yes. she put a big beautiful artichoke in front of me. Oh, she loved artichoke. Verify the fact. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, let's hear it. This is the funniest thing. My kids all like the artichokes, but they never liked the heart of the artichoke. So they used to give it all to me. So I would tell them, you guys are so stupid because the heart of the artichoke is is just like the stuff you're pulling off the leaf. So they tasted it and then they never gave me their heart again. So we always used to joke about that. Perfect. So that's what she's leaving you with. Is this a big, beautiful artichoke? Oh, oh that's so sweet. Oh, God. Oh. That's because she knows. Yeah, they stopped giving me the artichoke heart. Oh. They all ate it then. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you Thank so, you. so much, oh, Mark. My Thank pleasure. You. That made my Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that's hold on. So Go ahead. <laughs> Is, um, is there someone else that's resonating with that, uh, with what came through? Um, let's see. There, there are a lot of people who are saying how cool. Um, let's see. Artichoke hearts are the best. Um, I don't think that there's anything specifically about the artichoke hearts. But, or the dandelions? Uh, yes, we do have. Uh, Levon is saying she loves dandelion leaves. She juices them. It gives let's, her. Let's go to Levon. I mean, because I mean, I was getting boom. I mean, I could taste them. I mean, I was getting hit with dandelion big time. Oh, Irene, can you find Levon? Oh my goodness, how exciting! Levon's been taking a lot of everything that you've said tonight, so that's exciting. <laughs> oh, then then somebody's all right. Hey, Levon, how you doing? Hi, Mark. <laughs> all right, so yeah, all right, dandelions, ginger. Okay, what's with you and ginger, Levon? I. Uh, Ginger every day lately. Ginger, I okay. choose. Okay, all right. Juice so, hot. is this your is this your son? No. Oh my gosh! Oh, all right, because I'm getting boy. Let me ask him a step side. Is this your daughter? Yes. There's a young man over there, a boy um, with her. But we'll at oh oh hold on hold on. Oh. All right. So let's get your daughter in here. <laughs> now i'm tasting blood but this does not necessarily mean a bleed out this could be an issue with blood all right and yes. i'm also getting a sense of exhaustion prior mm-hmm. to passing um mm-hmm. one of those like her passing does not appear to have been a quick event it seems mm-hmm. like it took some time and like toward the end it's you know, I feel like I, I can't even lift my head off the pillow. Uh, she was so tired and I'm feeling a clasping of hands and Ooh. this is directed towards you. So, um, and obviously you were her mom and I'm sure you were there and holding her hand, but this is very important. She wants mm. you to know about the clasping of hands. Hmm. Does that make any sense to you? The clasping of hands. Were you holding her hand prior to I was her holding her in, I was holding her entire, yes, I was holding her entire body. Oh, okay. I did have my hand in her hand, yes. Right, right. You got to realize sometimes we tend to overthink things. We're like, well, I got to find a class. I'm getting the clasping. So there's the tactile. Yeah. So you were there 
and she wants you to know this. And she keeps going, peekaboo, peekaboo, <laughs> peekaboo. Now that's interesting. Anything with the peekaboo or Pikachu, but I'm hearing peekaboo. <laughs> okay, so real quick, Pikachu, I was at the store today. I looked down and I saw a Pikachu and I went, Pikachu, and I thought it was funny and hilarious. And usually when things like that occurs, um, I'm like, I've been a little bit tired the last two days. That's her way of coming in and just saying, I was with you at the store and hello, that's, here I am with you that's now. That's exactly what she's doing. <laughs> this is what I call a frequency beacon. Yeah. And that's where a spirit will um, draw your attention to a particular thing. And you said, Pikachu. And now she is validating that that was a contact experience. She's validating it through me <laughs> to you. Oh, I, I love her. She's great. Now, uh, let, 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 that just showed up. I didn't realize it was there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, That's I can. our little okay. badges. Our badges from a Helping Parents Heal conference. It just happens to be there. <laughs> okay. And pearls. Now, let me, let me, um, pearls can mean any of the following. Um, most of the ladies I know have something with pearls in it, but pearls can mean a piece of jewelry of significance with pearls, but pearls are the birthstone for the month of June. So this could be a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to her, to you, or someone close to either of you within the month of June. And because it's June, it's one of my triggers for a female name that starts with the letter J, like a June, Jean, Jane, Janet, Jody. All right. So anything with pearls, June, or a female J name? Um, Remember, saying... it, it doesn't have to just relate to her. It could relate to you in mm. any way. I would in... think my mother, my mother, Jean. Okay. She planted her through the other side. Other side. Okay. So and, it would indicate... and I was just talking to her the other day. Or thinking about okay her. all right so remember when i was saying we're going to get you know people other than your children coming through so you mm -hmm. got your daughter and your mom um <laughs> interesting your mom said for a longest time you were not eating properly but now you are um yep. now you are um hold on yeah you're eating a lot of the the dark greens <laughs> You're eating some really heavy-duty greens. See, I like eating that stuff. A lot of people are like, ooh, gross. It's like, no. In fact, I've never heard a spirit come through and say, you need to get more, you know, bacon grease and Coca-Cola in your diet. You know, they always talk about greens and, and, you know, these things. But what they're telling me is that you have instinctively, your body, you're doing a very good job of listening to your body. The one thing you have to be careful with is salt which is a bummer because salt tastes so darn good, Ooh. but they're telling you that you got to watch your salt intake. Um, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Now, um, they're, um, I'm tasting a lot of foods rich in sodium, like melons and bananas Ooh. and oranges. Now, that's fascinating because I do know that when your sodium is too high and you eat potassium-rich foods, it drives down the sodium and vice versa. So if you have too much potassium, you eat sodium. So I think what they're telling me is that you need to get more foods in your diet that are potassium rich. Um, okay. Traditionally, that's like bananas, uh, any of the melons, uh, yeah. oranges are real rich in potassium. Um, and, and But uh, you're doing really good that way. And okay, remember before I was talking about St. Christopher with the, the trips, did you just get back from a trip? You're getting to go on a trip or could be named Chris, Christopher or Christine. Go ahead. Okay. I get to share this. So I feel like I is a done deal and I wasn't sure how it was going to be done, but I'm going to Mexico city in June. <laughs> oh, this is getting better. It's getting better. All right. The, pyra the pyramid. I'm going to walk and hike the pyramid of the moon and sun. And I'm going to my niece's wedding in Mexico City, June. <laughs> Fantastic. In June. Now, yeah. here's what's also very important. It's going to be very hot there. Even mm. though Mexico City has a high elevation, you're going to sweat a lot. And what are the two minerals you need to keep from being dehydrated? Sodium and <laughs> potassium. Oh, I am so loving this. All right, so 
Um, your daughter said she's going to be there with you and you're going to be very entranced with, enamored, or fascinated with some type of owl. And it's going to be like a carving, like a stone owl, and it's going to be in the Aztec art. And mm -hmm. she said, when you see this, think of me. Does that, I, I, I know we're talking about that, but when I said owl, you started cracking up. All right, do owls, <laughs> the creature and owl make sense to you in any way? Yes. Mm -hmm. In what way? Um, they're just very majestic. Um, someone gave me uh, an owl um, feather and I just um, gave it to someone else as a gift. And that just happened two days ago, maybe a couple, three days ago. Yeah. I was Perfect. willing to let it go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so owl has, um, this is what I refer to as a multiple meaning message. Mm -hmm. um, these are all terms that I, that I have in my books and in a multiple meaning message is how one message has more than one level of significance. So she's talking about, you're gonna see some really cool Aztec art with some type of owl in it. And you're going like, oh my gosh. But then owl, you just, you like owls, you find them majestic and someone just gave you an owl feather. So this mm -hmm. has multiple meanings. It's a future event, so we'll have to see if that happens. Secondly, it has a philosophical construct for you. And third, it was an actual physical event that happened to you by somebody giving you an owl feather. Yeah. So, so we got all that there. And now I'm hearing, baby, you can drive my car and maybe <laughs> I'll love you. All right. What's going on with your car? <clears throat> <laughs> my car is my baby. It, it, it is my, I call her Sky and she is my spirit mobile. All She's right. awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's hey, awesome. There's there's a little scratch on the side that I, someone it, it, accidentally. Yeah, yeah. I was just getting to something like that. She's talking about the left front bumper. What's going on with the uh, uh, left front bumper? There is a left back bumper, but not a left front bumper that I'm aware of. All right, uh, we'll take the left back bumper, <laughs> but let's be careful with the left front bumper. Okay. I'll be mindful. Hey, yeah. do you have, um, she's talking about proximity sensors. Do you have proximity sensors on your car? Uh, we uh, get yes. too close. Some, okay. There may be an issue with the uh, front left proximity sensor. Okay. So I'll you may, uh, I, you may want to check it. So she's letting you know that. Um, okay. All right. Let's see if she's got anything else. And she keeps saying, Randy, Randy. Is there a Randy, a Randall, or an Andy? Because I get the Andy, but it sounds like Randy. Randy. No, not that I can I can. Okay, of. I must be arcing over to somebody else now. Well, Vaughn, yeah. I had, thank you so much for, for letting me do this for you. I did um, not expect this tonight, and I kept hearing, don't you dare get off. Don't you dare get off. I kept hearing it. <laughs> Well, you know what? You're doing a very good job of, of um, recognizing, accepting, feel, and trust. That's my four-step raft technique that, that, I, that I teach in the afterlife frequency. And mm -hmm. see, you do it um, instinctively, and everybody can do this, and you'll start seeing. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think that everyone that I've, I've done a reading for so far, and this makes sense with Helping Parents Heal members, that you all are open to spirit communication. And that's what I teach in, in my book, The Afterlife Frequency, how to recognize, accept, feel, and trust. And then when you start doing that, you're going to start seeing signs right and left. So I'm going to leave that with you. I want to valid, I want to uh, share real quick with you, Mark, when you talked about blood, she received a blood transfusion that actually gave her a little bit more time to hang out with mom before she before she passed. So blood is very significant. ARUP is very significant in my life. And so that's where the blood comes in, just to confirm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I appreciate that. And see, that's what um, with readings, you'll find afterwards, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, because it is, it's like a flower blooms, blossoms and unfolds. Well, thank you so much for the validation. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Love, Levon. Oh, my goodness. Love, <laughs> You said now, it, Elizabeth. <laughs> now, I am getting hammered with Randy, 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 Randy. Is there somebody, a, a Randy in, in the session or somebody have 
a spirit, um, uh, someone in spirit with the name Randy? Um, I know Randy was on earlier. I don't know if he's still on. Let me take a look. I see uh, my dad's name is Randy, but um, let's see. Yeah, That's Randy's not on now. You know, it's fun. Let me tell a real quick story. Um, I'm writing a story for Best Holistic Life magazine, and I invite everybody to get your free online subscription because in the January edition, I wrote a story about Irene. Um, <laughs> it's called Heaven is Better Than a Sunday. And um, on an unrelated note, I'm working on another story, and I was doing an event in Sedona, and this male energy came through, and he wanted Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. He wanted to talk to Daisy. Nobody there named Daisy. Well, that night, my manager, Rocky, was allergic to something, um, uh, a spore, and I had to rush her to the hospital after my event. She's going into respiratory failure. So she's in ICU, They've uh, uh, in the emergency room, rather. They've got her on, on steroids and oxygen, and all of a sudden, in the cubicle next to us, this lady opens the curtain and goes, are you Mark Anthony? I was supposed to come see you tonight, but my friend here went into respiratory failure like, like Rocky did. Will you sign my book and make it out to me, Daisy? <laughs> so so um, you never know how, how spirits are, are going to pop up. So just because Randy's not here now, a spirit is going to get through to you one way or the other. All right. So. Well. We do have someone, Sherry's saying that her family friend is named Randall and he's currently in the hospital and her cousin's name is Randy. So I don't know if... Um, well, if, somebody said I have a Randy in spirit. Okay, that's iPhone. Um, Very difficult. <laughs> we should always ask people to name their name their profile so that we know who this is. But I renamed um, all the iPhones. So does it just say iPhone? It says iPhone two one 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 one. Uh, so there are four. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm just wondering. You know what? What about? Um, I'm getting like a Mick. It could be no. It's Mickey. Mickey. Is there a Mickey? Mickey. Okay. Mickey. Let's yeah, because when we wait too long, and other spirits coming in, I'm getting a Mickey. Um, okay, Kathy's saying that Mickey Kathy. could be Nikki, but I'm, it's like Mickey. We have Nikki, so um, all right, we got a Mickey. Let's go with Mickey. Brutus is saying um, Mickey. So we got Mikey, and someone oh, said her last is name is McHugh. Danny's saying my son is Mickey. Um, okay, whoever said my son is Mickey, let's let's bring them. Who is that, Elizabeth? Popova. It's Danny Popova. So if um, okay. Let's see if we can find her. Yep, I've asked her to unmute. Hi, Danny. Danny, can you say something and make sure your screen is on? Are you there? Danny? <laughs> can you unmute or are you having trouble unmuting? Maybe we got to do this quickly, though. Um, she can't for some reason, it says. I don't know. All right, we'll we'll, we'll we'll cycle back. Um, okay. Hello, there she is. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay, let me stop, Danny. There we go. Hi, how you doing, Danny? I'm well. How are you? Thank you for Good. your time. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, Mickey, who's Mickey? So my son is Mickey, and is he's he... he's Earth side, but his he's... little sister just passed away. Okay, hold on, hold on. All right. Um, female energy, and I feel like, um, first off, please accept my condolences. And like I said, I get very clinical when I'm describing, and I don't mean it like like that, all right? Yeah, um, but I'm getting a female, I feel like my lungs are filling up with fluid. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Yes. yes. And um, I'm also getting issues that could have been affecting her liver as well. Do you have any knowledge of that? All right. Yeah. Okay. So she's coming through and she said everything possible was done. Everything possible was done. Um, and I get this dizzy disorientation. Now the dizzy disorientation 
could be the condition that that was causing her passing, but it could be medication as well. Um, because I get this dizzy disorientation. I feel like my lungs are filling up with fluid. My liver is killing me. And then my stomach is hurting too. Um, and with the stomach, I'm getting a sense of nausea and nausea can be an indication of difficulty eating and or holding down food prior to passing. But sometimes nausea is a cancer indicator. It doesn't always mean cancer, but sometimes it is. Does any of that make sense to you? Yes, she was unable to take a breath. She was heavily medicated. She couldn't, she had, um, yeah, eating everything you said makes sense. She was just young. She was a baby. Okay. Um, hold on. Wow. I keep getting these like, um, when I'm jumping like that, it's like a neurological shock. And this appears to have been some type of seizure convulsions and with the lungs and the, the liver, there were two different things going on with her. There was the lungs, the liver, the GI tract. So we're getting that, but I'm also getting um, a neurological component with her. And basically it was just too much for her, her little body to handle. And um, she said, do you, wow, all of a sudden I'm smelling strawberries. Do strawberries make sense to you in any way? Do you like uh, them, dislike them? Or, I mean, yes, strawberries. yes, my, my son loves them, her brother. Verifiable fact following the message, all right? Yes. So that's why she's saying that everything possible could be done. It's just that um, her time in this world was very short and it's very hard for us to, to grasp why. And she said that this, this was her last lifetime here. This was her last lifetime here. Now, obviously, I believe in reincarnation, and I don't push my beliefs on anybody, but um, every spirit and everybody that's had a near-death experience all talks about, about this. And she said this was her last incarnation here but she also knows how difficult this has been on on you on her entire family um her brother it's, it's he's mickey right yeah yeah she's explaining how this has shaken him to his core and he doesn't understand and he he's he's having such a hard time putting all the pieces together um has he been running like real hot and cold since she passed like sometimes he's more communicative and then other times he doesn't want to talk at all she yeah. said just leave him be in other words say you know mickey i'm here for you she said eventually he's going to be more communicative with that and she's showing me a beautiful um, stained glass window of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, this could mean a couple different things. Um, this could mean a significant birth, death, anniversary or event, which could be connected to her, but it could be connected to you or to someone close to you within the month of May. It could also be a variation on the name Mary, like Mary, Marilyn, Margaret, Marie, um, could be somebody of the Catholic faith, but I'm seeing this beautiful stained glass window of Mary. Does any of that make sense to you? Well, um, all of this made sense, makes sense. And uh, in terms of Mother Mary, I pray um, to her and a girl, Marilyn, really helped us while we were in the hospital, while she was fighting for her life. Um, okay, so you see this... Yeah. Sure, sure. This is a multiple meaning message, and you pray to Mother Mary. Um, I know that um, one of the earlier readings, um, there was a reference to dandelions, and, and um, the woman said, well, we like sunflowers, but your daughter's spirit is projecting to me, they look like sunflowers, but they're, they call them black-eyed Susans, okay? Because they got the brown dot in the middle and the yellow. They look like, you know, mm -hmm. smaller versions of sunflowers. 
and she's giving all of these to you. So there could be a Sue or a Susan, or there could be something that looks like a sunflower or, or a daisy. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, she. I feel like she's been giving me flowers. Probably not how sad I am. Okay, yes, yes. And the pink butterfly, the pink butterfly. Now look, I'm not one of these airy fairy psychics that flings out unicorns and butterflies and stuff like that, <laughs> unless it is presented to me. I am being given the image of a pink butterfly. And, I, you know, I'm sure there's pink butterflies, but this could be something in a, in a, a design or a piece of fabric or something. Does, does a pink butterfly make sense to you in any way, Danny? Uh, my son made a beautiful colorful. There's a lot of pink to a butterfly with stickers. And I was thinking a design like that uh, could go on her um, stone when we put it up. I think she's confirming that that's what you need to do, a pink butterfly. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Um, I have a lot of guilt because I think I messed it up and she was supposed to be here. No, no. She wants you to understand that. Did they do blood work, uh, an analysis afterwards? Because she's talking about protein deficiencies and um, um, anomalies with her red blood cells. So it's it's there were so many problems with her physiologically that this is not your deal. And, and the thing is, Danny, it is very natural for a mom to feel that you are somehow responsible. I mean, that's part of being a mom. You know, you're supposed to be Wonder Woman and a superhero and, and always save the day. But what she's explaining to you is that on a cellular level, there were so many problems with her blood cells and with the neurons in her neural network that there, the, she just wasn't going to make it. And that's she what was, she wants yeah. you to understand. She was deprived of oxygen at the very last stage of labor. And that's what caused like all the program, the problems. She was deprived of oxygen for way too long. Yeah, it was just too much. So that would make sense with the, the deprivation with that, um, with, with the, the protein. Um, but there was more, there was even more to it than that. And the problems existed. In other words, what she's saying is her physical being was very brittle and the oxygen deprivation, um, uh, maybe other children similarly situated could have come through, but she was so brittle. But that's what she's saying is this was her last time in this world. So on one, in one sense, that's, that's great. But certainly for you, I know you'd rather have your little girl here, and so would would everybody here. Um, but she said that you are already a woman of deep faith in love and compassion, but her transition has opened up a new doorway for you on your spiritual journey. Yeah. Also, your son he's obviously he's he's very upset about all this but he is going to be a very spiritual person a very spiritual man um i wouldn't be surprised if i don't want to say necessarily that he may go into the clergy but he's going to have a very spiritual life because she talks about him being very sound sensitive do you know if he like does anything with music or sound? Because she talks about him being very sensitive to frequency. He is very musical and he does not lo like loud noises. Right, right. Well, that's going to carry over into his, boy, it sounds a lot like me when I was a kid. You may have a medium on your hands, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have a very spiritual uh, son there. And um, she said, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. 
and I'll leave that with you. Thank you so much. I'm very, very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Okay. That was, thank you so much, Mark. Goodness gracious, that was amazing. And it's always just so wonderful to read in the chat box. Everyone is very, very supportive of Danny as well. And I, um, I as all, we all are, as well as all of the moms who have spoken with you this evening. And um, it, it really is wonderful to be able to know that our kids in spirit are still right here with us and that they share in everything that we're doing. And this has just been wonderful, Mark. I, I appreciate all your time. And um, we missed having Rocky with us as well, but it was great to have her at the conference. Uh, you two are two huge bright lights and we appreciate everything that you do to help parents heal. And um, we always ask everyone, first of all, I want to make sure, I know that we know that we have to subscribe to be able to get this article about Irene, which is so exciting. Anything else you'd like to leave us with this evening? Um, uh, sure. Um, I want to go ahead and put in the chat room real quick. Um, um, it's going to be www.bestholisticlife.com. And um, you can also, if you, you know, it's, it's a free online subscription. And I did write a, a really um, uplifting article, Christmas article, um, about some of the pain that I've gone through you know, with my own personal loss. And then, of course, in January in Best Holistic Life, uh, I wrote about how I met Irene, uh, and it was just just uh, amazing. Um, I do invite everyone to go to my website. I'm going to put that in in the chat room as well. If you'll bear with me for a second. Of course, I, I'll be putting these on the video as well, so that people will be able to see um, them forever. So. Um, once you put that in the chat box, there are two websites. Which one is the one that? Oh, they they all go to the same. Um, um, Evidence of Eternity and Afterlife Frequency will both go to the same domain. All my books, um, I have the domain name for all my books. That's Afterlife Frequency. Um, this, you know, this is the gift you give give to yourself and give to people who are are coping with loss. Um, I'm, I'm very humbled at the the reception the afterlife frequency has gotten um it just won the uh, coalition of visionary resources um award for best book for grief and and life after death um shirley mclean uh, the film legend uh, recommended it uh, dr gary schwartz and the top near-death experience researchers in the world have endorsed it um it was ranked by prettyprogressive.com as one of the top books about faith in God. And I was so floored when I found out it was considered for a Pulitzer Prize. But most importantly is the, the way it's been helping people. And if you go to my website, afterlifefrequency.com, you can find out about getting my books. But also, Every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and all times in between and either side, I have a live stream show, The Psychic and the Doc, and it's a call-in show. And I invite all the Shining Light parents, call into the show. Uh, I do many readings on callers in tandem with my co-host, the amazing Dr. Pat Basili. She's a world-renowned behavioral psychologist. Um, and I understand we've just been nominated in four different categories for podcast uh, slash live stream show of the year. So, um, so that that's available to everyone as well. And I particularly want to thank Helping Parents Heal. This is such a beautiful organization. I come across so many parents and I tell them about it and they're like, oh my gosh, because incorporating spirit contact as part of your journey through grief makes such a huge difference. And Elizabeth and Irene, you guys did such an amazing job, uh, not only putting this together, but the conference. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. It was, it was just fantastic. So 
I want to wish everyone a very Merry Ramahana Body Dwali Kwansmas. I think I got everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> and a Happy New Year. But uh, thank you for, for honoring me and letting me be here. And um, I look forward to returning to, to other events like this with Helping Parents Heal. We always oh, for sure. Thank you, Mark. Thank yes, you. you're Can't part wait. of the family. Yes, Thank this you. is just so exciting. And we, that was an amazing conference. We are just so grateful that you were there with Rocky and um, and have a very, very uh, happy holidays uh, and tell Rocky from us as well and a happy new yes. year. And we've unmuted everyone to be able to Thank say- Thank you very yes. much. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. a blessing Thank you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.